Um, so today I have quite a few things to do. Um, I didn't really get anything done yesterday because obviously I didn't film it, but uh, it was a long day. <laughs> I ended up going into town to make that Home Depot run I've been talking about for a few days. And while I did get a bunch of stuff, as you can see, multiple bags of things, um, the biggest thing I was looking for was um, insulation for my flooring and like everything to get my subfloor done. Um, and I found some really awesome things, but um, I couldn't find the foam board insulation that I needed. And sure, they had foam board insulation, but my options were either the pink stuff, um, can't remember the name of it at this moment, um, or the polyurethane, which is the silver backed one. And I was going for that one because it has a vapor barrier. I don't need to do any extra steps. I don't have to worry about moisture getting caught between the foam and the vapor barrier. So to me, it was just the better option and higher R value. Um, so I'm trying to get as high as possible for the thickness that I'm getting. So I was planning for one inch. Um, I'm hoping for an R value of six with that. Um, so far, the only one I've found that has that high of a value at that thickness is R max, um, which they did have some of their boards there. But of course, they were like quarter inch with you know, to our value, or they were like two inches with like 12 R value, which is great, but I don't want to take any more headspace away. Um, Cause even though I might be a short person, I want my tall friends to be able to still come in my bus and hang out comfortably. Um, that was a big part of the reason I bought this bus over buying like a van. Cause it's just me. I don't honestly need this much space. Um, but you know, when an opportunity falls into your lap and, um, you get a good deal, then you buy the bus that comes along. <laughs> so I think my goal for today, it looks like it's not really sunny, but it's not raining. So I think it might hold at this temperature all day. So I think I might start by painting some hills on the floor. Um, and then I have a welder who should be stopping by here any second. In fact, that might have even been him that just pulled up. Um, but coming by to look at my front doors and I will let you guys know how all that goes. I'll show you what I want done on the front doors, but um, hopefully he's going to help me with it. So what I want to do with these doors is make them a little bit safer by taking out this cast iron handle mechanism. Cause even though it's really cool and I like the aesthetic of pushing the bus doors open, um, it's really impractical. Cause if I come with an arm load full of groceries, I have to get in through this door, put the groceries on the floor and on the seat and then either climb over them or move them again onto the floor and then step over them. And it's a whole thing and I really hate it. So to make that less of a struggle, I'm getting them to take that off and then take this rubber stripping off the edge here, as well as this one, um, taking these two doors and welding them together. So it's going to stick out to about here and then adding an extra strip onto this side of this one and putting a handle and a deadbolt in there so that I can open it from the outside and it's going to be a whole lot safer. Um, I can actually lock my door at night instead of, um, I had to make a lock because I was not satisfied with how this was closing up. So I'll show you real quick how I used to lock it. Obviously I don't really lock it right now because there's not a whole lot of need in this neighborhood. At least when there's nothing in it, there's not. So it went around like that and then through the handle and then this loop clipped onto there. Kind of hard to do with one hand. 
Okay, so I'm not gonna lock it all the way because I don't have the key on me right now. But you get the idea. It's solid, it can't move. Also, this is really heavy. And I got in a car accident a few years ago and just, I can't push that hard on this. So we're replacing it. So that person that I thought might be the welder, was <laughs> they just pulled up to the wrong house because my neighbor also has a bus um and i don't think he knew what to expect um so he just left essentially he said he can fix my door um it's just gonna take a little bit of thinking and working and figuring out how to do it so materials aren't gonna be that expensive um but the labor might go up a little bit um, but still, his original quote to me was only, um, well, the original quote was $3,000. And that seemed really high. But then when his team came out here last week, they quoted me like $700 or $750. $700 is not bad, especially when compared to $3,000. So even if the cost of labor goes up a little bit, um, even if it pushes eight, nine hundred, I'm still okay with it because it's not three thousand. This bus needs to be safe before I start traveling. So now that all of that's done, it is still nice and early. It's only like 10 a.m. Um, so I think I'm gonna get started on all my work for the day. So before I start painting the floor, God, I need to finish getting all this rust off. So that's my next project. <laughs> Eye protection. Thank you, Pedra. Next on today's list of things to do is first cleaning the bus and then um, putting spray foam in all these holes in the floor and painting. Yay! I'll clean. I'm leaving those guys over there because this guy is just too heavy for me to move by myself right now. So um, I'm gonna leave it and just do from this back wall all the way up to where the, the edge of where that's sitting. Um, and then later, once I get that mounted in back here, I can paint the front, but it's definitely gonna have to be done in two goes because, well, I just, I can't lift it. I could, but I would hurt my back and I'm not trying to do that right now because I got a lot of stuff to keep doing. So I discovered an interesting issue um, when I brought the bus here. I hadn't looked at the back in a while, I guess, and it had to be some point when I was in California because um, it wasn't there when I bought it, but the back of the bus has bullet holes through it. Here they are. I had to rip the spray foam down to get to them, and my walls are not built of the best material. But yeah, that was a a fun thing to discover. <laughs> and this is them from the outside. You can see that I push that metal through just to kind of hold it there so that not as much water gets in. Okay, it's time for some spray foam. Spray foam down. got like 
uh, six or seven more long strips like these. Um, so I think I'm gonna put it on pause for just a second though, cause I don't wanna lose my daylight before I can put um, more of the JB Weld stuff on that tiny hole um, in the roof. So I'm gonna climb up there and come back to the spray foam. Um, some of it, the thicker parts haven't sat in the middle anyway, so it'll just be a few minutes. <laughs> So I got a different product this time because the store that I went to did not have the same kind as I got last time. So this time I got the Gorilla Glue brand. So this one is definitely a lot more pungent than the one I got last time. Like it just smells like straight up acetone, um, which is kind of weird, but um, I think it's still going to work really well. time to paint the floor and I'm so excited my bed liner came in so um yeah it's open I'm so excited So this is what I got. Um, I looked at a lot of videos of different kinds of roll-on bed liners. Um, I learned that roll-on is definitely a lot better than the spray-on. Um, much thicker coating and it's gonna be stronger. So I watched this one video that was really, really good and tested um, like 12 different kinds of bed liners and Herculiner looked to me like one of the best and definitely the best for the price so i got three boxes so let's see what's in these okay so what i got was the kit um i couldn't find it in just gallons by itself um so let's see what's in this kit uh, instructions Ooh, good okay so it came with a brush it looks pretty nice not too bad um, and then it came with a couple of foam rollers with all of the reviews on these guys um, everybody said that these don't work very well so I actually already bought another pack of bigger ones um, that should work a whole lot better I just got them at Home Depot and then the gallon of the bed liner um, so they said this was really hard to mix. So when I ordered that, I also ordered this guy. So this can attach to the end of my drill so I can stick it in there and it'll make it uh, mix it up a lot faster and easier than I could do. So, so that's what came in my kits. Um, I'm really excited for the next sunny day to get this on there. Um, I've learned a lot of things from watching other people's videos. I learned that I should probably have it fully painted on and done by 2 p.m. so that it doesn't streak down the side. Um, I watched a video where there's just started running and it was no good. They had to take care of it and like bake it from the inside and I really don't want to run into that problem. So um, yeah, I'm just going to wait for the next sunny day. Honestly, I'm pretty sure it's like probably at least a week or two away. This whole week is supposed to rain. So we'll see when I can get to that. Um, I'm gonna head up there onto the roof and start sanding right now. Since it's not raining today, it's not really sunny enough to paint, but I can prep and get everything ready so that the next sunny day, I can just start early and be done by two. <laughs> so here we go. I got barely anywhere at all and it's raining. So now I'm gonna have to put the tarp back on and I guess come back to this tomorrow because I think it's about to downpour.
Okay, so I'm very confused. As you can see, there's a tarp over the top on the outside, yet there is moisture leaking in. And I don't know how. I must have put the window in a little crooked, I guess, when I took off these strips and took out the screws. All the screws are in it. I guess it might just be crooked, but I haven't been able to figure out this leak yet. Okay, so I haven't filmed that much today after I got off the roof of the bus because most of it was just cleaning. Um, so I had already cleaned and filled all the holes over here, just cleaning the silicone out, but I had to do it for this side. This side isn't done yet because I couldn't move this by myself. I'm still having the same issue, um, but I'm gonna make it work. Uh, it just so happens that the two like big areas I need to fill on either side, right there and right there, this is spaced out perfectly so it fits right in between the two. So I think I'm just gonna spray foam on Oh, it is? I might get some on the dresser or on the garage, but it'll be okay. <laughs> I can always scrape it off later. So um, I think I'm just gonna go with that so that I don't hurt myself moving this again. So I'm gonna get started on filling all those other holes. Probably should have done it at the same time now that I am realizing I couldn't have moved it anyway, but whatever. I got uh, spots that I could use the extra spray foam. Anyway. I got all the holes in the floor filled and of course I still have extra spray foam. Um, so I did forget one hole when I was doing the back and it's pretty big. I forgot it because there was a huge wire going through it. But the wire was for the lift, which is no longer there. So I taped it off and I'm gonna zip tie it up to the bottom. And so I'm gonna go fill that hole and then I'm gonna use the extra spray foam to fill some weird little cavities in the wall that are gonna need it later. So might as well use it up now. Second can of spray foam. Down. <laughs> and talk about how the door is really going to be set up. Gosh, I keep burping. Um, probably because they're... <clears throat> Excuse me.